I knew pretty, you know, pretty early on when uh, we went through some old scrapbooks and stuff that I had, and my mom found this report card from first grade, and and uh, and my teacher was talking about it in the report card about how I like to entertain and sing for the <laughs> and sing for the class and show and tell. So, and I sang it. The song that Righteous Brother song that had the most impact on me was and was my favorite song growing up was Rock and Roll Heaven. Uh, in 1974 when that came out I had that 45 and I remember sitting up in my room and just playing that record over and over and over and over and over again and uh, trying to sing like you know trying to emulate Bobby Hatfield and all those high harmony almost high harmony tenor parts <clears throat> and um, and and I mean and that was just like what struck me when you know Bill asked me to do this and he sent me a CD uh, or with all the recordings on it, and I was just listening to the songs and trying to, you know, it's kind of interesting approaching this of how much of Bobby I wanted to try to emulate. Really, I just wanted to hint at Bobby, what he did, and then put my own style into it. But, you know, I, I had to pull the car over because when Rock and Roll Heaven came on, I, I really, I started to tear up because I'm thinking, here's this little kid, you know, at, you know, nine years old in Alabama playing this song in his room, and, you know, what, 40 years ago, yeah, forty years later, I'm standing on stage singing with 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 the guy. With the guy. Yeah. Professors there at the time when I was there, uh, uh, Dr. Cleveland Harrison recently passed away, and he was the theater history uh, play analysis. Uh, he brought to life the Greek tragedies for me, and I learned the background of, of, of theater and the different forms of theater. You know, and I uh, that I was never uh, not that I wasn't aware of, but just gave me a general education on on theater history and how it changed throughout the years and the different styles of theater and, and performance. And then, you know, I got started taking dance so I, uh, it, with the theater department when Diane Robinson was te uh, teaching dance and I got infused with that. And then I was fortunate to have Dr. Ralph Miller as a mentor. And he's one of my, I have about five mentors in my life that really I think shaped me that if I had not met them, I wouldn't be the performer I am or where I am. But, um, you know, he encouraged me as an actor because I've always been a singer and I'd been an actor, but I was just kind of doing it on the fly. I didn't know what I was doing. And he taught me a lot of different acting methods. Uh, so performing at Auburn and, and being in the theater department at Auburn and being influenced by so many great teachers there uh, made me more well-rounded and more educated and more versatile um, as an actor. Um, I always sang, but that's the reason I decided to get my theater degree and not my music degree is because I knew I was a singer. I knew I had had success doing that, and I wanted to explore the acting side of it and become more um, uh, educated and well-versed on different techniques, and that's what Auburn did for me, and probably my best memory at Auburn was doing was the process and the show uh, that we did my senior year when we did Hair. And we brought in a director from the Alabama Shakespeare Festival. I think it was, I think his name was Bill Gregg, I want to say. Uh, and uh, that was just an incredible experience. And my first real lead at Auburn. Uh, no, but I had a, 
I had a 1977 Alfa Romeo oh, Spider right. convertible. Mm -hmm. And one of the coolest memories, um, I think Auburn beat Florida State, but it was back one of the last times we played them. Mm -hmm. God, it must have been 86 or even. I can't remember, remember the year. Remember we beat the year. them, like, mm -hmm. and they were ahead of us, and we came back and beat them. And I, and I had my top down, and I drove through Tumor's Corner, and they filled my car up with toilet paper. <laughs> it, was, it was, the whole thing got rolled and I had the top down and I was up to here and toilet, <laughs> and oh, the whole toilet paper, yeah. But that and going to the supper club and mm -hmm. uh, uh, just being on campus was really cool. Uh, I loved, I loved being in school. And of course, you know, going to the Auburn ball games, uh, yeah. you know, I, I saw Bo on campus one time, that was really cool. Uh, but, but sitting in the end zone in the student section, you know, for Auburn games and all that, Risks, you know, October, Saturday was, I tell folks, you know, I tell AJS, that's, you know, one of the coolest things I've ever done. I haven't been back at Jordan-Hare since 89, so that's why I'm really, this was, you know, and I think, you know, you know, I'm a man of faith. I think God had his hand in this, and, I mean, because the whole step of this has been just so smooth, but having me driving by the theater, looked up, saw the journey was on, he sent me a text and said, hey, I'm going to pop my head in. Now, if you talk to Bill, <laughs> he was thinking, there's no way Buck can sing this stuff. I'm, he goes, I'm going to go in and he's going to die. I mean, he's going to just, he goes, I just got to see him try to do this. He stayed for the whole first half. Then he came back for CCR the next night and invited me to lunch at Fuddruckers. And I called my wife and I said, I said, Bill came to the sh two shows. I said, he just invited me to go to, to lunch at Fuddruckers. And I said, and I was completely kidding. I said, I wonder if he wants to get the Righteous Brothers back together. And my wife said, well, he probably needs a yard boy or something. <laughs> so that's how the ball started rolling with that. And uh, and then he said, I may be thinking about this, thinking about that, you know. And um, if you talk to Bill, Bill said when he heard me do the journey, he said he was taking his walk down at the landing. Since Bobby died in 2013, people have been trying to get Bill uh, to bring the Righteous Brothers back. And he just said he didn't want to do it and didn't feel it was right. He said I, he sung with a whole bunch of people and... There's a lot of singers that can sing the Bobby Hatfield part, but he wanted somebody that he felt, you know, the chemistry's got to be there. The voices have to blend. And so we sat around the piano. He was, he said he was walking on the landing. It was like stopped in his tracks and went, Bucky's the guy. And he said, I just knew it at that point. So we sat around his piano and sang Love and Feeling with his Grammy Award sitting on top of the piano. An opportunity to come to Harris for a residency. Would you be took me to dinner at Level 2 Steakhouse to, to tell me this. So I told AJ, I said, I graduated from Fuddruckers to Level 2 Steakhouse. <laughs> and, and in the middle of dinner, he just, we're sitting there having dinner, and he's telling me this, and all of a sudden he just holds up his wine glass and says, are we doing this? And I said, uh, I thought initially you said that you were this is going to be down the line, and you had some other guys you were looking at. He said, I, I, I feel that this is right. Our voices blend. We like we like each other. It feels good on stage. The chemistry's there. Are we doing this? And I said, cheers. I'm your brother, man. And Bucky Hurt. Bill Medley. Thank you, folks. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Righteous noise.